This past Wednesday marked one year since a gunman shot and killed eight people at three different spas in and around Atlanta. Six of the victims were women of Asian descent. And although the shooter claimed his actions were not racially motivated, in the year plus since, attacks against Asian Americans skyrocketed, thanks at least in part to pronouncements like this. I would like to begin uh, by announcing some important developments in our war against the Chinese virus. It's not racist at all, no. Not racist at all. But as a recent Boston Globe op-ed notes, even as these attacks have continued, Asian communities have persevered and rallied. Here in Massachusetts, Boston elected its first Asian American mayor. Eight state house members identify as Asian American or Pacific Islander, the most in the governing body's history. But according to the authors of that op-ed, we can and should be doing much more. I'm joined by State Representative Trom Wen, who co-authored that op-ed, along with Leverett Wing. He's the president and CEO of the Commonwealth Seminar, who also joins us, and North, uh, Northeastern University Chief of Staff uh, Stephen Chen. Uh, Representative Leverett, it's good to see you both. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you so Thanks much for, for having, having us. Jim. Representative, starting with you, I, I think everybody watching knows hate crimes are up, particularly against Asian Americans. But they're not just up. It is astronomical increases, uh, are they not? Absolutely, and we're seeing increases across the country as well as here in the Commonwealth. But it's not just against uh, anti; it's not just against the Asian American community. But we're seeing hate crimes increase overall, and that is very alarming for all of us. But in terms of Asian Americans, I think I read that what 350 percent increase in a year in New York City, more than 500 percent in San Francisco, and Representative, the primary victims of these attacks are women. Am I not right about that? Absolutely. And seniors, too, unfortunately, the most vulnerable in our communities. You know, on that note, the National Asian Pacific uh, American Women's Forum put out these statistics that are just jaw-dropping. 74% of AAPI women uh, have experienced racism, discrimination in the past year. Have you, Representative? <laughs> I have not been a victim of a hate crime, uh, but I have been uh, a victim of hate speech. I think many of us, particularly in the AAPI community, have are far too familiar with the rhetoric of us being perpetual foreigners. You don't belong here. I remember an incident uh, year, a couple of years ago when I was in front of the uh, courthouse, right, in um, Suffolk County. And I was standing out there with a, a client of mine and trying to explain to her, she's a new immigrant. I was explaining the law to her in Vietnamese and this biker rode by and said, go back to your, uh, your own country. You don't belong here. That is just one of many incidents that have happened to me. And I'm sure to many others. And Leverett, I, I was right when I said that, that, that uh, uh, this is mostly, uh, uh, I mean, that portion that's erected at Asian Americans is a product of Trump drumming up this, this the, the animus uh, over COVID. That is the genesis of a lot of this, is it not? I mean, for, for the COVID uh, violence and the COVID hate, but I mean, we have to remember that these types of Things have been perpetrated against the Asian American communities for generations, yeah. starting with the Chinese Exclusion Act, and then moving on sort of the high profile, uh, high profile ones with Japanese, the Japanese internment. I mean, when when folks are looking for a scapegoat, when folks are looking for somebody to blame, um, that the Asian American community has been unfortunately front and center uh, with with a lot of these. So, what this was was just another example of the AAPI community being targeted uh, for, for scapegoating. You know, Leverett, when you say the Asian American community has been front and center, there are obviously many other communities of color that have faced serious discrimination and hate through years in this country. You're doing a lot of the outreach to other communities of color, other advocacy groups, and it appears, at least to me from your op-ed, that you're getting a pretty good reception. Is that a fair characterization? Yeah, I mean that's been one of the, the one of the few silver linings to all this. I mean we've we've been able to create better, more allyships, stronger allyships, um, more understanding, more commonality because these are things that we've been going through together um, with George Floyd, with Ahmed Aubrey, with uh, with many of these things. Our our communities, our diverse communities, have been able to come together in a way that um, you know I've been doing this for for many years in, in a way that that 
I, I, I haven't seen ever. And so that's something, again, that's that's a, a small silver lining to this, but yeah. it is a substantial one. You know, Representative, uh, you started, you both, the three of you in your op-ed talk about solutions, not just problems. You mentioned at the Boston Foundation, something called the Asian Business Empowerment Council is helping Asian American owned uh, businesses, particularly hurt by the pandemic. I wanna focus on the legislation though that I know you're involved in. You guys cite, uh, New York State, California. I was unaware of either of these efforts. Serious uh, public money being directed at the Asian American community. You also think that there needs to be reform of hate crime statutes in the state. To what end? To do what? So Lover brought up the Ahmaud Aubrey case, uh, and actually that was an impetus for the hate crime spell that we have pending in the legislature right now. We started working on this bill about a year ago uh, at the uh, during the anniversary of the murder of Ahmaud Aubrey, and we did a deep dive into our own laws to see if that were to happen here in Massachusetts, would we be able to hold perpetrators accountable? And uh, we started working with the Attorney General's office as well as Senator Hines to do a deep dive into our laws to see where there are gaps gaps and certainly we identified certain gaps. Our laws are uh -huh. vague and overlapping, which means that pers uh, prosecutors and judges lack clarity and have a disincentive to pursue hate crimes. And so uh, we decided to add in various protected classes to be more inclusive. And we also dealt with the issue of mixed motivation. As you mentioned in the beginning, when, uh, for the example of the Atlanta shootings, where the perpetrator said, well, I had a bad day. I had a yeah. sex addiction, but it was no coincidence that six out of the eight victims were women of Asian descent. And so in our laws, we wanted to clarify that uh, if a crime is committed in whole or in part based on hate towards a particular partic um, protected class, we should be able to pursue that as a hate crime. Hate does not need to be the single motivating Understood. factor in order for us to do that. Leverett, I only have a minute left, but there's one other thing on your solutions list I thought was really important, is initiating more diverse curriculum at uh, in the schools. Uh, briefly tell us what that would mean. I think it's, it's more inclusive, as you mentioned, it's more inclusive. It's a wider net. Uh, it educates everybody about all of us. I mean, people talk about ethnic history, ethnic, ethnic studies. We've been learning ethnic studies for years. It's just what ethnicity have we been learning? I mean, I learned that Columbus discovered America. <laughs> I, you know, that the, the Wimmer Schoolhouse Rock, there was that cute little line about the manifest destiny, which made you know the, the massacre of Native Americans sound so cute and innocent. But it's just, you know, all we're trying to do is make it more inclusive so that all of our stories are told and all of our histories are told so that we learn more about each other and that we can see our commonalities. I wish you a great success in your work. Uh, congratulations so far, Representative Wynn, Leverett. I really appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Great. Thank Thanks you so for much having for having us. It's great to be here with my friend Leverett. That's great. great yep, to same have here. You. Same here, Representative.